Good afternoon, everybody. Warm welcome to you all. Welcome to this fourth customer success session. And this one is dedicated to the Internet of Things. And as a matter of fact, we have two customers lined up for you. The first will be First Consulting and the second will be Antail, but that's for later. Um, I'd like to invite to the stage right now from First Consulting, Armijn Spreitzer and Paul Ten Haaf. And Armijn is Director of Internet of Things, he's the second one there. Paul is, is, has a slightly diff more difficult job title, Practice Lead Business Technology. Hello, Armijn. Hi, Eric. Good to hear you, sit. Just sit down, it's okay. okay. So, um, let's talk about First Consulting itself. Paul, um, what does your company do? Something about <coughs> consulting, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we just celebrated our 10th anniversary. Okay. We currently employ about 150 consultants in various markets, mm -hmm. uh, energy, telecom, infrastructure, uh, finance. And we have m mainly two lines of business. One is business process improvement, and we improve main processes for our clients. Um, and the other one is business technology, where we help our clients innovate and differentiate. Uh, the main business is Agile development and, and Mendix really our strategic uh, sparehead. Uh, other one, Agile uh, reporting and, and Cloud BI, data management. And we just added a fourth one, Internet of Things. Good. And that's what Armin mm. is in charge of. And it's yes. funny because a year ago we sat uh, at a Mendix event together as well. Then you were a director of Internet of Things at KPN. Yes. And now you're at First Consulting. There's a, an, an important difference there, right? Please explain. Yeah, well, I, I uh, worked for KPN with a lot of pleasure for uh, uh, going to market with Laura. We discussed that. And what you see now on... Uh, Laura is uh, the long-range uh, yeah, yeah, IoT-specific uh, internet yeah, network. Yeah, the communication network uh, which really stimulates, uh, or st stimulated uh, the IoT community to execute IoT. And uh, what we see now is a lot of companies are uh, exploring IoT and uh, testing with it. Uh, actually, I have a slide for it as well. Okay, let's um, go. And what you see is that many companies are, are trying to improve their businesses or their services to customers with IoT. Uh, and KPN made a lot of, uh, many steps to help them uh, implement and test uh, those solutions. But we see now that customers are looking for help to uh, implement it in their business processes. Yes. So uh, my ambition was to help them there. So uh, I was looking for a professional uh, consultant to uh, which is really uh, specialized on helping customers implement their uh, solutions in, I in IoT. And uh, well, I found first consulting for that. So I decided okay. to, to join them. So now you can help many different partners find their way in the Internet of Things instead of just one. Yeah, you see that a lot of customers are looking for the right business case and uh, really didn't have a chance to uh, find the best way to, to scale up their IoT solutions. Uh, the first focus was on, on getting the IoT solution to work, to yep. really track and trace or give the right data to, uh, well, uh, use their assets in a, in a way to make their logistics or their... Uh, uh, well, their, uh, their other business is more efficient. Um, and now uh, many solutions are really uh, uh, doing fine. Pilots are, are uh, in a further stage. And now we go to into the stage where they really need to look in how to put it uh, in an effective way in their business as well. Yeah, we'll go, we're going to an, uh, an important example later on in this talk. But uh, at this stage, can you give me now one or two simple examples of, of uh, Internet of Things applications that you're working on? <coughs> well, of course, we know uh, ProRail is uh, uh, had an uh, uh, important uh, notice on the, the, the traffic, uh, the, the ro uh, ra railroad as well, to uh, give their, uh, uh, their trains more uh, efficiency. Okay. So we uh, offered them, KPN did, with a partner, a solution to monitor their tracks. Uh, and of course, we know all uh, container tracking, trash bins, connected cars. Uh, mostly tracking of, of large volumes of uh, uh, assets within a company like uh, logistic companies following their, their uh, traffics. 
why is Mendix uh, uh, a, a good tool for Internet of Things applications? Well, what you see is that um, if you implement an IoT solution, um, you have to use an, uh, an IoT platform. And what yeah. most customers are struggling with is uh, an IoT platform can, can have a, a pretty nice interface, dashboard, but you really want to implement it in your existing uh, well, uh, IT solutions, yeah. infrastructure, yeah. Or, or your uh, applications, and uh, that's what uh, what Mendix, uh, uh, well, is a right solution for. Was first consulting working with Mendix before you arrived, or did you bring it in? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we we've worked with Mendix for like three years. Okay, two years ago we had uh, the first Mendix World, and we had we just started with one project at NLA, and I remember thinking, okay, what am, am I going to bring to the boot? So I brought a, a bicycle of NLA. And now, two years later, uh, we just created a leaflet with a lot of Mendix cases we did. And I think we have about eight or, yeah. uh, or but ten. But explain about the bicycle. What about it? It's a great NLA bicycle. It's really, yeah, it stand out. It's, it's, it's orange and yellow, and it's in the colors of NLA. Yes, but what does it do? What's, uh, what's Internet of Things Nothing special. Yeah. No, but I brought it to, to Mendix World two years ago. Yeah. So I thought, what shall I bring? I'll bring <coughs> something that that resembles the case we did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But now we, we've we've come a long way. So uh, yeah. And and what you're seeing is that Mendix is being adopted by really the big enterprises. So NLA yeah. was innovative, and you see the innovation starting with the MKB, like 200 employees. But what you're now seeing is that companies like Delta Lloyd and Philips yeah. and Others are really adopting the platform. Yeah. How did you discover Mendix? Uh, we were hinted by uh, uh, a client of ours. We were working them with, with at our clients with another technology, and they said that's consulting the other way around. Yeah, and they said <laughs> you should really talk to uh, to Mendix. Okay. So I contacted uh, Floor van Gageldonk, uh, and later on I met uh, Martin Otten and. Uh, we did really they, liked did the they send you an invoice for that advice? Nope. <laughs> 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 and we, we, we really liked the product, but we also yeah. liked the company. There's a real cultural match between us. And uh, yeah, and uh, now, nowadays we're with around 30 Mendix consultants every day working on various projects and we're scaling up pretty rapidly. Okay. Let's look at the application mm. that uh, you're here for. One yeah important one that you'd like to share with us. Yeah, and that's where we won the, this award for, the most innovative solution that, uh, that Mendix uh, presented to us yesterday. So awarded we're very by Mendix itself, awarded right? Awarded by Mendix. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, our client doesn't want to be on stage because they, we are launching the product, or they're launching the product in, in a couple of months. And they, they really think it's groundbreaking and revolutionary. So, uh, and they think they can really gain a competitive edge with it. Yeah, so isn't that a teaser? Here's this product, it yeah. gets an award, and we're not going to tell you what it is. Not right now, at least. I can tell... In due course, okay? I can tell a lot about it, but I cannot be too specific about... Uh, tell us about what you can tell. I'm, I'm okay. very anxious to know. So, the, the company we work for, they work in the ag agricultural business. Mm -hmm. They produce systems that they sell to, to farmers. Uh, they're market leader in their territory, but they're facing stiff competition from the Chinese, amongst others. Who doesn't, yeah. So, they think, okay, uh, whether I'm going to compete on price and lower my price, or I create a competitive edge, I, I create an extra service that I can offer to my clients, and maybe they can subscribe to that, uh, to that product. So they came to us with, with this ID that they wanted to use, the information that they had in their devices. What if they could make information from that and offer to their clients in a mobile app, in a phone app, or in a tablet app? Um, and by that, giving the, the farmer means by making their... their the crops more efficient by, by, by creating more, more output, actually. Okay. So, um, yeah, they had that ID. Maybe we can show it on... Uh, There's supposed to be a slide. 
on a the green button. Oh, the green. Yep. Sorry. Okay, here it shows automatically. Uh, what we actually made, and I'm, I'm going to start with uh, uh, the right one, is, um, is an app. And it's used by mechanics, it's used by uh, the end user, so the, Farm. the farmer. Yep. And it's used by the back office of our client. And it's, it's an app where they have uh, data visualization of sensor data that is in the farm. So they have and the real farmer, time farmer takes out a su subscription to uh, keep using the services of your client. Yes, right? yeah. Yeah, that's, okay. that's the idea. Yeah. And they have real-time info on, uh, for instance, humidity, temperature, uh, electricity use, and stuff like that. So that's the data visualization part. The other one is they get triggers when something is wrong in the farm. So the sensors send out a signal, and it's been picked up by the app and it will send uh, a push message towards the farmer or the mechanic. Yeah. The third part is they can trigger processes from the app. For instance, hey, I want to buy some new equipment, uh, and automatically the order comes at the back office of the company, and they can ship it, or it's an alert for the mechanic to, to go uh, right. to the farm. And then it also depends on the, the, the kind of contracts uh, they have, of course. Um, and the fourth one will be that we will crack some data, try to make combinations, and really make some extra information from that. For instance, on preventive asset maintenance. OK. So that has been uh, built, into, uh, built with Mendix, uh, so the presentation parts on the mobile, uh, the mobile apps. In how uh, having heard three sessions before this one, in how much time has this been built? Uh, we had a minimal viable product in, in about eight weeks. Okay. So, and of course, we had to prototype in like two weeks. Uh, but we worked, I think we, we had a good preparation phase where we decided on what's the right architect or what, what parties should be involved. And I was very glad that, uh, that our client chose to have some good partners from the beginning. So we had Siemens for all the, all the devices and the communication and we chose Amazon, Amazon uh, Dynamo as the, the, the data storage. Okay. Mendix for the app, and uh, they hired First Consulting to do the project management and to create the app and to also uh, help implement, uh, help yeah, create a continuous feedback cycle together with, with farmers. And just to be sure, did Mendix prove itself? Were you happy having? Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's proven itself as a, a minimal viable product. So the the first pilot customer is really happy. So now we're and let's call it a version 0.9. So in the in the next couple of months we will be working towards version one uh, 1.0, and we're piloting with uh, with two other farmers and see what feedback they have. What do they want more in the app? And after that. It should scale up, and they want to roll it out uh, over yeah. their entire customer base. Yeah. What's the crucial property of Mendix to make it fit for this application? Well, Mendix is very suited for agile development, and you have to know it. It was an idea. Okay, what shall we do? We want to bring information to the farmer, but if you ask, okay, how do you want to do that? How how should it look like? What do you want in it? Yeah, it really was a, a road towards getting there. And, and Mendix is, is great at just prototyping, uh, getting feedback from customers, using the feedback widgets, also to make some logic in the microflows, show it to the, to the specialist, and they can follow uh, if this, then that. It's like a flowchart that you read, and it really helps in creating understanding between the, our consultant and the specialist and the, yeah. and the end user. Yeah. OK. Uh, this was your last uh, slide, by the way? Or are there any uh, more? Now we have one more uh, goodie that will be available to, uh, to the entire Mendix uh, community. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. What we'll publish in the, in the Mendix App Store pretty soon is a connector uh, that will make it real easy for all uh, Mendix developers to start working with what uh, uh, Derek referred to as the smart apps. So uh, 
if you want to work with the LoRa network right now, it's not extremely difficult, but you have to talk to lots of uh, APIs, and it's, it's pretty technical. And with the app we will publish, you can import it into your app, and then it's like in, in, in five minutes, it's plug and play, and you have your device management for your LoRa devices in your app. And what you also have is a connector that you can start receiving data immediately. And we feel that it's, yeah, it's a good means to have the entire Mendix community work with IoT apps. <coughs> it's not our idea that this will be uh, production-ripe apps, because if you really want to scale, you should put something like Amazon in between. Yeah. But for the prototyping phase and just going about it at various enterprises, it's... Uh, it should work, work And great. is that something you charge for, or is it free? Um, the LoRa connector with, with, the, with the data <laughs> will definitely be free, and the device okay. management will we, have to deliberate. Okay, uh, that's that. clear then. Okay, good. Um, what else are you going to do, Armin, with the Internet of Things and Mendix combined? Well, I think this is a great example of how we can help customers uh, in the next phase of IoT execution. So uh, the app for LoRa uh, is a great example, but also uh, execution on the business process uh, will, uh, well, we have to make a, a next step in it. Uh, not only scaling up, but uh, using Mendix for, uh, uh, well, a great platform to um, make kind of custom-built applications to help uh, customers put their IoT solutions in their company. And I think uh, we will learn how to do that we are not. Uh, we do not have all the knowledge to do it uh, uh, all the way yet, but we are learning fast. And I think um, we all do uh, partners uh, first consulting as well. But uh, we would, uh, using Mendix is a great instrument to to get into the next phase. Yeah. So um, we will continue doing that, uh, discussing it with customers, uh, trying to help them to uh, get to the next phase. Uh, and that's uh, dependent on which customer and how big and, and what course. solution, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's about it for the time I have for you because there's another guest waiting in the, uh, back there. Um, but I will allow one or two questions for the, or the audience, if there are any. Mm. Who has a question for the gentleman here? If there are none... There's one. Okay, I'll bring you the <coughs> microphone. Hang on. And if you would please stand up for a minute and tell us who you are. Thank you. How you deal with cybersecurity of this uh, Internet of Things and uh, Mandex? That's a good question. Yeah, it's a good Thank question. Um, that's why I was so glad that we had a professional partner like, uh, like Siemens involved. They handle all the security, and it's not on a Wi-Fi network, but it's power line communication, so and they encrypt it, uh, and then we send it to secure Amazon environment, and we use uh, HTTPS to connect to that server. So a lot of encryption going on, and uh, yeah, we're, we're certain that it cannot be, be tapped, and, but that's something that we will also uh, test out in the next phase. So now we have this um, minimum viable product, we're going to test it, and security is going to be uh, yeah, an important criteria to say, okay, and now we have a launchable product. Okay. It's an 0.9, right? So uh, we're yeah. still working on it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Armijn Spreitzer and Paul ten Haaf okay. of First Consulting. Thanks. Thanks. And my next guest will be walking up the stage right now. It's Mark Rumers of Anttail. Hi, Harvard. Hi there. Please sit down and I'll make sure you have a clean glass of water. Thank you. There you go. Nice hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> good, that's a good start. Um, please tell us about your company. What do you do? And tail. Um, we're a company, a uh, pharmaceutical services company. So we help pharmaceutical companies to control their supply chain with uh, which they send medication from production all the way to the patient. So this is the transport of pharmaceutical drugs? Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, how is that difficult? 
You just put pills in a bag or in a truck and you yeah, bring them from A uh, to B. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the simple part. Yeah, but how does that require IT um, at all? Well, a lot of medication requires special conditioning. If you take vaccines, for example, uh, in, I think in Europe and America, all our infants get uh, vaccines to prevent them from getting smallpox or measles yep. or uh, you know what. You need a fridge for that. Uh, yes, because they have to maintain two to eight degrees Celsius. And uh, two years ago, for example, there was a routine check from the Ministry of Health in the US. And they found out that only um, about 55% of the vaccines were uh, actually uh, stored and shipped according to the conditioning that was uh, What's required. What's the percentage again? 55. So 45 was off. Okay. So that's, that's, a, lot, that's a large chunk, yes. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, how did you find out and how did that, that bring you to start a company? Because Antel is a startup. It is, You're yes. one of the founders. Yes. So how did you decide, here's a problem that I must solve? Um, well, it didn't start working two years ago, mm -hmm. obviously. No. And the company uh, I had before this was already involved in cold chain monitoring, but mostly in food. You say cold chain? Cold chain, yes. That's the chain of uh, things that are in the fridge. Uh, <laughs> and there should be, to be, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or should be in the fridge, yeah. yeah. And I, uh, I didn't know that that uh, terminology. No, it's a, it's pretty. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a thing. <laughs> um, well, in the pharmaceutical industry, you have very strict regulations. Yeah. In a, in order to produce something, you have to be GMP. That's good manufacturing practice. Good manufacturing. Yeah. Yes. In order to get that, you have to go through all these uh, uh, audits and stuff. So it's very hard actually to start producing medication. And uh, once they are produced and they're uh, going to be stored in a warehouse and then they're going to be shipped. And all the shippers and uh, people that run warehouses along the way have to comply to GM, uh, GDP, so good distribution practice. So it's that's logical. also regulated. Yeah. And, um, so what it, can go wrong? Uh, well, a lot of things actually, <laughs> because people tend to think they uh, adhere to a certain procedure. But then when you start measuring with like a sensor, like the previous company here, then you find out there are all sorts of deviations that people leave stuff too long out, uh, out of the fridge or uh, certain storage doesn't comply to regulations. So although the whole process is certified, the companies are certified, yes. things go wrong. Yes. Good. Uh, no, that's Not bad. good, yeah. <laughs> Not good. So what, what next? Uh, you decided to do something about it. Well, we um, have... Um, now, uh, uh, let's say wireless uh, sensors in place that can actually monitor shipments, but we can also monitor uh, storage at home, at uh, patients' home, because in the Netherlands, a lot of patients get medication for three months in their fridge when they have rheumatism, for example, mm -hmm. and they can inject themselves. Oh, wait a minute. These are uh, um, uh, drugs that are so expensive yes that they even th they, they come with their own fridge into the patients yeah home. that's that part it? of the program that we support but okay. mostly uh, people just get them at the uh, pharmacy oh, and so they and they put them in their home fridge so far that that didn't happen and the pharmacy just said uh, here's your medicine please put it in the fridge exactly oh wow yeah and then what happened then they were 90 percent off so that's a lot worse than in the you know gdp process so storing uh, medication in your home fridge is not a very good idea. Okay, so your solution is uh, this fridge that traveled with the medicine all the way from the... Uh, pharmacy to the patient. The factory to no, the... No, not the, uh, the factory, not the pharmacy. The pharmacy, the pharmacy to, okay. Okay, yeah. yeah. The, the way that is uh, handled uh, in this program is that people actually uh, get a, a fridge which is filled with the medication and the fridge can uh, stay autonomous for uh, up to 24 hours. So the, the, everything is packed for the patient and then shipped out to the patient. And the patient gives his old fridge back and then the whole exchange runs. Exchange even yeah. fridges. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Which is you know, a big, a big uh, hassle because it's yeah. a large volume that you actually ship out. Okay, but that's but uh, the only way to ensure that it, it's really good. Yeah, and the stuff inside in the fridge is so important 
It's that about, it's all uh, worthwhile. It's about 14,000 euros per patient per year, and we have about 50,000 patients in the Netherlands. So if you do some calculations, you end up way over 500 million euros a year. But what happened until you had your product? You say 90% uh, the, the, the um, way people treated the medicine at home Yes. Made it 90, you said 90% off, but yes, uh, more than yeah. they had. In fact, they had just 10% of the drugs that they should have taken. No, what uh, the 90% of is uh, um, of the drugs that people take. Yeah. Only 10% was actually had been stored, or less than 10% had been stored in the correct conditions. Okay, and the rest was it working at all? Um, uh, in various degrees. So 10% was also frozen for more than two hours, which renders the whole product ineffective. So that basically doesn't too work. Too cold isn't good either. Too cold is actually worse than too hot. Wow. So did people die from this? Uh, no, but uh, in some cases people can develop uh, an allergy for the medication because the, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, I don't know the English word, IBIT uh, breaks down. Protein. Protein, yes. Protein breaks down, and so it can cause an allergic reaction. So okay. that's, uh, you, you don't want that. Different, different, stuff, different stuff inside of you than you're supposed uh, to. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you developed this product? Uh, yes. And uh, is everybody buying it now? What, what's happening? Well, we are uh, on the contr uh, contract from one large pharmaceutical company. And we are doing a rollout in the Netherlands. Uh, in the Netherlands, there are about 100 hospitals, so we're rolling out 10, and there are 30 under contract. So we have 20 to go this year, and 2017 will probably go up to 50 or 60. Yeah. And the product, in fact, is a fridge and monitoring around the clock. Yes. And that's the Internet of Things part. Exactly. It, it comes with its own internet. Um, basically, well, well, how yes. How do, do I picture this? Is there a mobile phone inside? Uh, sort of, but uh, a lot smaller. So we have a very small sensor that monitors temperature and light mm -hmm. because we repack or uh, we pack the medication in a seal bag. So when the patient opens the seal bag, we can actually also monitor adherence because there's two big factors in uh, uptake of uh, medication for the patient to improve its health. And that's that the medication is in good condition so yeah. we know that because it's been stored in a good condition. And secondly, whether or not he takes it on time. Okay, you can monitor that as well. Yes. Do the patients like that? Um, we help them with that's an app. So we oh, actually okay. tell yeah. them th that it's time to take the I medication. I mean, it's good for them, but there's also a certain privacy issue involved, I imagine? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. There's so how about it? Uh, do, do you get reactions from patients uh, so um, far? Well, patients um, like the fact that they get good cared mm -hmm. uh, medication. And um, when the patient opens the seal bag, it also communicates with an app. So he can also check the condition of his medication before he takes it. So for him, there's a value in that so that he actually knows that what he injects in himself is the right yeah. stuff and not the wrong stuff. Yeah. So the patients also get gets access to the data? Uh, well, not the data, but uh, the actually uh, he just gets like a traffic light. It's green, <laughs> you can take it. It's red, don't take it. Okay, it's so a binary thing. Is uh, zero yes, or one? Yes, it's uh, zero or <laughs> one, yeah. And okay. when it's not good, he can automatically uh, uh, dial his uh, pharmacy. And, you know, the pharmacy can actually see the data and then tell him, well, you have been... Um, uh, you've taken too long before you uh, um, inject it because uh, yeah. the, when you take it out of the fridge you have to leave it out for like 30 or 40 minutes because otherwise you inject it and then it's really cold <laughs> and then you, you get the it does, yeah well it doesn't really feel nice it, and okay so that's, they have that's the only problem or will it also affect uh, how the medicine no works? it doesn't affect how it works okay. but then you uh, if you you inject it in your leg but then you you feel like your whole leg freezes off so it doesn't really <laughs> feel very comfortable all right that's very very interesting uh, what's the connection with mendix well what we do we harvest the data from the sensors um, and we put it in, a, uh, in the cloud in Amazon, as a yep. lot of people do here. And from Amazon, we use Mendix, to, among others, to uh, give uh, uh, users access to the data. Because for different applications, you want to have different portals or different, uh, let's say, portable apps on your phone. So uh, Mendix is our way to actually 
give our users or patients or doctors access to the data. Yes. And so there's this, this uh, app. It distributes data. Um, is it changing a lot? What, what makes Mendix a good uh, a tool to make this app? Um, well, Mendix is very quick. So mm -hmm. you can sort of uh, run uh, sprints like every two weeks and then come up with a working prototype after two sprints. Yeah. Um, but is this an app that needs a lot of evolving? No. It's mm -hmm. very stable at this yeah. point. So it's, uh, um, we're going to do uh, new uh, releases if we uh, enter new functional areas. Yeah. Well, but but um, give me an example. What, what could that be? Um, we're also talking to a global uh, company that uh, runs cooling systems in trucks. And they have ah. uh, also, uh, you know, uh, they want to be able so to that's monitor. It's a completely that, that different product. field where you can use exactly. the same kind of app. S same, uh, the same okay. kind of technology okay. in the back end, but a totally new app, a totally new field. Is that that happening already? Yeah, that's uh, we're prototyping it now with uh, with them in the Netherlands, and then we uh, want to roll that out in uh, Europe for uh, okay. starters. Yeah. yeah, we may have time to talk about that a bit more, but first the the uh, uh, medicine thing. How big is that market? Well, in Netherlands, only uh, for rheumatism, you have over 50,000 patients, between 45 and 50,000 patients that actually get those very expensive medication. So in Europe, the market would must be over uh, maybe 300, uh, 350,000 patient, uh, patients that all have the suffer the same illness and the same challenges to store the medication. And this is not, you know, you also have uh, oncology, so uh, if you have cancer, uh, some medication also have to be, keep, uh, be kept cool. So that is also uh, might be a huge market. Okay. What business model are you using? Uh, um, uh, two different ones. Uh, we, have, we sell hardware, so yeah. that's one. That's the fridge. And then, uh, the fridge the, uh, or the sensors. Yeah. And the other business model is we sell uh, a license fee per patient and we also have a fee per uh, shipment. So it's like okay. three different business models stacked all together. Okay. Um, getting back all to the beginning, uh, the company is called Antail. Yes. Why is that? Well, our wireless sensor communicate in a, in a special way that is a lot like how ants communicate using pheromones, so there's no hierarchy in the network. So it's, um, it's a, um, some people may know, it's a gossip network. So they're basically... Gossip? Th gossip, yeah. So okay. And the sensors gossip among each other. So they also store, one sensor may store data from another sensor until it gets into contact with the router and then sends it to the back office. Uh, but are there, are there different sensors inside one fridge, or do you mean uh, fridges amongst themselves? No, no they're, 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 uh, they're the patients get uh, three uh, packages, and all every package has its own sensor. I see. So we can also monitor the, um, the stock that is uh, at the patients, so whether it's been used or not used, and, so, and the condition. So we can also tell them when it's time to replenish. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what exactly now is there is, is uh, in here in there for the patients? What do you, how do they profit? The patient profit. Is that it prevention of this allergy thing that you mentioned? Well, no. Well, the patients uh, profit in the way that they get better condition medication. So you get actually the stuff that comes out of the factory, or at least uh, uh, the best way possible. And the other thing, because you get reminded to take it on time. Um, you actually uh, um, uh, the, the level that you have in your system yeah, you optimize. Is, consi is consistent and so uh, it's more predictable for the physician and the pharmacist to see how you react to a certain, uh, a certain medication. How did you decide to use Mendix for this thing? Well, a colleague of mine uh, from uh, way way back when I just finished university and started working um, told me about this, and I really uh, I couldn't believe, you know, because the story was too good to be true. So he, uh, I've heard that before. Yeah. So he told me just, you know, go ahead and try. Yeah. And um, I basically just I downloaded it and uh, uh, I made a whole demo for the pharmaceutical company in Mendix in 
you know, after a learning curve. You did that yourself? Yes. Okay, do you have a programming background? Well, I did that for three years. It was a bit rusty because the last program I did was 1990, so I, I had to start after like 24 Some ancient years again. programming knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you had the right mindset, at least. Uh, yeah, well, you're curious and you want to uh, see how it works, and yeah. it's incredible how quick it is. Yeah. Did you have fun doing it? Yes, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I was surprised about how quick and how much fun. So you prototyped it, but did you also make the uh, end version? We prototyped uh, a lot, and what we did was we, uh, um, the stuff that it, uh, uh, is data gathering, you, uh, we yeah. did some Java code for that with a supplier, and the dashboarding we do in, uh, in Mendix. All right. So uh, and, uh, the prototype didn't have any, uh, it did have data, but it didn't really have a big back office. So it was a running demo, basically. Okay, yeah. Version 0.9, I heard somebody say. Okay, but the, the final product, how, how did that came about? Well, we did it uh, with the a final app, I mean. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We did it with a supplier. And uh, because my, uh, our company is very small, we, uh, we actually have everything outsourced. You're how many people? Three. Okay, so two founders and somebody else. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and uh, well, uh, we hold all the IP, and uh, so the rest is uh, outsourced to uh, other parties. Okay. Somewhere along the way, preparing this uh, this conversation, I came upon the the, the um, abbreviation triple AS App as a Service. Yes. Did you invent that? Uh, no, I w didn't invent oh, that. Oh, I think I it's, a it <laughs> it's a current term. It's a current. Current term? No, really. It's um, um, one of the big hurdles for large pharmaceutical companies uh, to implement something in their back office is next to impossible. So yeah. it's for them, it's very easy to have something, uh, you know, that uh, runs in the cloud and they can give to their patients or uh, uh, logistic partners to use instead of uh, developing it uh, themselves. Sure. Okay. What role does the cloud play for you? Well, without that, it wouldn't be possible, really. It's, uh, it's essential. Uh, yeah. It's in the Mendix cloud, uh, your, uh, your yes. app? Yeah. yeah. So that's a, a, a more or less a default choice. Uh, yeah. OK. What are your plans for the future using Mendix? Uh, um, well, I'm very curious to see uh, how Mendix 7 will uh, uh, change the, the face of uh, app development, yeah. because now you can actually go to a user and make your screens, which is great for adaptation. And I'm also very curious about smart apps, so we definitely going to look into that. You intend to take a look at it yes. and uh, yeah. see what you can use. Yes. Okay. Uh, and concerning this this trucking thing. Yes. Um, what what other applications for your basic invention do we, do you have in mind? Well, we're currently looking at the logistic process. Uh, let's say from the factory all the way down to uh, uh, the pharmacist. Mm -hmm. because there's also a lot of theft involved and also something called oh. counterfeiting. Right. And now uh, there's a lot of action going on from governments, the US and also in Europe, to uh, prevent counterfeiting. And um, it's becoming a very big problem because now the drug cartels are getting involved because it's actually almost as profitable as cocaine or heroin. So the, uh, the scale on which uh, drugs are counterfeited is uh, enormous. Yeah, and so you can monitor if somebody is peeking inside a truck the same way you can monitor if a patient is uh, opening his fridge. Uh, sort of. We want to uh, start doing sensors in boxes in the factory so uh -huh. you can monitor when the box is opened and you can actually, uh, they have an activity called serialization. So that means that in every customer box there is a unique 2D barcode and you can also um, um, have every shipper box with a unique barcode. So what you want to do is get all that information into the sensor so you can actually work offline and see if your box is still the same box that has left the factory. Because the theft yeah. in Africa and in India and in Indonesia is almost like 50% uh, of medication you buy there is counterfeit. So if you're lucky, it holds no harmful ingredients. <laughs> and if you're not lucky, you, you, know, you get ill. Yeah. yeah, that's bad. Okay. Sounds very useful and interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's question time. time. Who has questions for Mark Rumers? There's one at the front. Please wait for the mic. There you go. Please much. tell me who you are. 
Hi, I'm uh, Frank Groter from First Consulting. Yeah, hi. Hi. I just heard you say that you're outsourcing actually uh, the development of the app. Yeah. Um, well, I was uh, actually, um, I'm curious about your experience, experiences with the outsourcing. And mainly the first question was, are you outsourcing it to a Dutch company or actually like India yeah. or? Yeah, we've outsourced. Because first consulting is always available, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we've outsourced uh, to a Dutch company, yes. Well, that's kind of answering the questions because I was wondering what if you, uh, how are you uh, approaching the long distance uh, communication? But that's well, not the I case. live in Amersfoort and they're in Putten, so it's yeah, not too Yeah, so far that's then. off the table. Well, <laughs> then you answer my question. Thank you very much. Very practical. <laughs> Next question. Hi there. Uh, Hi. Named Ryan. Hi. Not never mind cold chain monitoring. It, it sounds like your app's in a perfect position to patient monitoring at home. Also, do you, yeah. do you feed back this information to doctors so they can actually to see if the patient is taking the medication that the way they're supposed to? Uh, we could, but um, um, we run into some uh, privacy issues. Yeah. So uh, uh, we we could um, give the app that the patient has like a button. Please tell my doctor. Uh, but we cannot. Uh, give that information uh, without consent of the patient. And there's no need for it from the patient's perspective? Uh, no. Especially, in, I mean, with the, you know, you get patients that have mental issues, sort of dementia and depression. Yes. Yeah. They would, that they're never going to volunteer that kind of information, but it would help the doctor to actually see that kind of information. Yeah. We're actually into a, a legal uh, issue now with a pharmaceutical company to change the consent forms to be able to distribute the data to pharmacists and doctors. But it, sometimes in hospitals, this runs into problems because they want to have the patient more in control than just signing off a consent form. So it's definitely possible, but it's, you know, the whole legal issue is a big thing. Next question, probably the last one before we wrap up, if there's any question left. I see oh, people here. pointing. Yeah, there's, sorry. <laughs> the lights are bothering me. There you go. Hi, Mark. Yeah, my name is Jeroen Tirion. I run Hi. a startup as well. Oh, nice. And I just learned about the, the license cost of Mendix software. Yeah. And for my business model, it might seem prohibitive. How are you dealing with the license cost of Mendix for your application? Well, that's an interesting question because um, uh, it seems uh, rather mm -hmm. steep if you only have uh, like a uh, one paying uh, customer or something. So what I did is uh, I did the whole thing in the sandbox until I got a paying customer. And then my license uh, uh, fee was including the, the Mendix license. Yeah. Smart solution. Yeah, well, you can start really cheap, but then at some point uh, you have to start paying something. And in my experience, if you run your business model through uh, some Mendix guys, they're mostly flexible enough to help you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark Roemers Herbert. of Entail.